good morning uh, good afternoon and good evening everyone uh, who are joined from the many different uh, geolocations across the world so today our webinar topic is uh, my new apis for gold api monetization so in simple terms uh, what we are going to discuss today is uh, how you can earn revenue from your apis and uh, how you can monetize them so my name is sanjeev malagoda and i am working as a software architect at wso2 so in my role i primarily work with uh, api manager product team and responsible for uh, feature implementation and feature design part so with me uh, today i have uh, chamin das uh, who is also working uh, wso2 api manager team uh, and uh, currently he is working as a senior software engineer so uh, today uh, we will walk you through uh, some of the concepts uh, related to uh, monetization and uh, then uh, we will discuss about uh, how you can monetize your api uh, what are the concepts behind that uh, how you can sell your api uh, those kind of things and finally uh, we will have a demo uh, and uh, during that demonstration we will explain you uh, how you can uh, enable the monetization with wso2 api manager and uh, for the billing part uh, we will use stripe okay so uh, so first uh, we'll have a look at on uh, agenda for the topic so uh, like i said first uh, we will discuss why we need uh, api monetization then uh, we will discuss uh, how to make your api into sell api sellable product and uh, what are the value additions you need to add so then we will uh, discuss a little bit about different api business models then uh, we will have a look at on wso2 api manager monetization feature overview and then uh, we will have a demo okay so uh, when we discuss about the api monetization uh, let's see uh, uh, what is api monetization so when we work with uh, wso2 api manager customers and the, the people who are using apis over last few years uh, many people ask uh, i mean people ask many different questions so sometimes they keep ask about uh, new api trends uh, what will happen within next 2 3 years uh, what technologies uh, will dominate uh, within next years and things like that so um, one of the most important question most people ask is uh, uh, what is the best way to generate revenue from the apis or in simple terms how i can uh, generate revenue from my api so that is one of the most common question uh many people ask from us so uh, to answer this question uh we can uh, analyze uh what why we need api so if you analyze carefully uh, why we need api who need api uh, those problem then we can easily identify uh the ways to uh, monetize your api and generate revenue out of that so if we uh, uh, think about why we need the api uh, there can be multiple reasons to have api so one is the drive innovation and accelerate go accelerate and uh, uh, go to market quickly so if we think about uh, application developer who is developing application then uh, uh, for the application they need data so in order to have data they need to have uh, some kind of a service so apis are the most uh, easiest way uh, that they can use to access uh, data that they need for their applications so that is one thing and also uh, some people can use uh, apis as a marketing channel or lead generation source and also similarly uh, people can use uh, apis to acquire new customers and users and also if you are already doing business and at some point when you grow your business you need to work with partners and resellers so in that case also you need to expose your services and data to outside uh, partners or reseller so in such case you will need to uh, expose apis to your trusted partners and also if you plan to build the audience and ecosystem around your products like uh, customer engagement uh, customer issue reporting system so if you have that kind of requirement in that case also 
uh, you will need APIs. And also, if you plan to integrate your service with different devices and systems, then in that case also you will need to have API because these devices and systems need to be connected to each other. And in such case, you need to have API. And also, if you if you think uh, you have some valuable data that you can sell outside. Uh, in that case also you can have api and expose that data to outside as a api so these are the most uh, common uh, requirements to have api so if we carefully analyze about this uh, this requirement then we can identify uh, how to build monetizable api okay so if we uh, have a look at on uh, some of the organizations uh, it driven organizations uh, we can see uh, many people are uh, generate revenue uh, through apis so in a recent report it was mentioned uh, salesforce generate 50 percent of their revenue through the api calls and uh, ebay generates 60 percent of their revenue through the api calls expedia 90 percent and stripe generate almost all the revenue uh, through the api calls so as you can see here it's not a uh, like uh, few thousands or few hundred thousands of dollars business anymore so it's a billion to trillion uh, dollar business uh, with this and uh, this is keep growing so we are expecting to see uh, this trend uh, going within next few years and uh, after some time uh, most of the technology even company IT companies service providers uh, APIs will become their main source of income. So that is the importance of uh, uh, having a revenue stream through APIs. So now uh, we will see uh, uh, what is the value addition uh, that we have with uh, API management and uh, how you can uh, build sellable APIs. So uh, in early days, before we have API management, we have set of services and uh, service consumers keep using these services through the web service call. Then after some time, people introduce API. Uh, then uh, with the API, we got different quality of services, including the access control, uh, as a transformation capabilities, uh, mediation extension support, rate limiting, and there are a lot of other features came into picture so consumers get additional advantage so now uh, we will think about uh, internal deployment so uh, where we have uh, a set of services and the consumers all all those are reside in the same network or same organization as example we can think about uh, one it company and it has set of services and consumers so if we take this kind of scenario most of the time we don't see any uh, requirement of monetizing apis it's true these apis uh, giving some additional value to system or it uh, help uh, organizations day-to-day -day functions but most of the time there's no point of monetizing these apis when all your consumers and the api providers are internal so this is the uh, initial state so then uh, when your business grows, uh, probably you will have to work with uh, external business partners and uh, uh, your trusted uh, network uh, outside your organization. So in such case, uh, you will have to expose your APIs to outside, uh, most probably to the partners. So when you expose your APIs to partners, uh, you will have to think about the monetization. So most of the time, based on the agreement uh, that you have with your partners, uh, you can decide API monetization methodology. So it can be usage based or it can be transaction based. So that is something uh, you can decide based on the agreement you have with them. So in that case, most of the time, uh, these business partners uh, have to pay something for you or as uh, you can pay for them to use your API. So that kind of agreement you can have with them. So then next model is uh, having a API marketplace, uh, which allows uh, 
uh, external users to uh, access your API. So in this kind of cases, most of the time, uh, users will have to monetize your API because uh, all the people access these APIs are outsiders and uh, it uh, maintaining this API uh, management system and the services uh, incur you some cost. So you have to uh, uh, manage that cost. And in that case, you will have to monetize your APIs. So uh, as you can see here, we have uh, different parties here. So you, uh, API providers and uh, consumers, both internal, most of the time we don't need to do the monetization. And uh, if uh, API providers are internal, consumers are your partners and outside people, most of the time you will have to have some kind of API monetization. Okay, so you can see uh, these partners, external users, external consumers, most of the time uh, they will be the uh, consumer of the product and they will have to buy these services. Okay, so uh, when we have this kind of system, our APIs should be marketable or sellable. So now we will have a quick look at on how you can build a sellable API product. Okay. So in order to have sellable API product, we need to have some quality. So it's, it's uh, somewhat similar to any other product. So if your product have a good quality and if your services are good, then only people will buy it. And also once uh, people buy it, they will repeatedly buy it, repeatedly pay it, if this product is having good quality. So when it comes to API, uh, there are certain qualities that customers or users are expecting. So if we consider API, uh, API should have good quality. So what does it mean by the quality? So quality means uh, when it comes to API, uh, API should follow the best practices. For example, uh, if we take one API, it should have correct naming convention, correct versioning uh, concept, uh, major minor patch version concept, and also it should use uh, correct HTTP method. So if you are creating resource, we should use post. If you are getting resource, we should use get. So that kind of uh, best practices should follow. And also we need to have uh, uh, documents and also self-descriptive APIs. So having document will make uh, API consumers life easy because they can easily read, read the document, understand how this API behaves and use the API code. And also it's very important to have samples and required help available in the API. So then only these people uh, can easily use these APIs and also build necessary tools to make integration e easy is also very important. So uh, for this one, uh, as example, we can think about SDK, client toolkits, uh, that kind of uh, tools uh, that we can provide to client. So for example, if we think about the SDK, then that will cut down a lot of cycles API consumers have to spend on uh, developing the client application. So they can simply download the SDK use it in the application and develop the application within a very quick time so that will make their life easy so if you have something like that then people will love to use uh, this api management solution or this api so that that enhance the quality of api and also uh, allow users trying out uh, and see how things work is very important so these days when uh, someone try, uh, want to try API, first they will uh, try out the API and see how requests and responses are working. And also providing sandbox environment, again, very important. Reason is if you have some kind of a complete scenario, you can try that in the uh, sandbox environment and see how the functionalities work. So if they are satisfied with that, then they can uh, go for the real environment. And also, uh, Having uh, some dashboards and uh, is very important. So with that, users can visualize their API usage and uh, how this API is getting used and all those things we can see. And also if you have some way to troubleshoot uh, issues related to that API, uh, giving proper error responses with the messages, those things again will be helpful to uh, 
build a sellable API product. And also, uh, we need to have ability to uh, uh, expose, we need to expose APIs in a way that it suits to different market segments. So for example, if you have some uh, high amount paying clients, some, some clients that pay less amount, so we need to have different kind of APIs that are suitable for their requirement. So then only we can address uh, all the market requirement and have a uh, sellable API products. So, uh, so now, uh, so far we understand uh, why we need monetization, uh, how you can build a sellable API product, all these things. So now we will have a look at on uh, different API business models. So if we take uh, API business model, so there are about like uh, define uh, 20 business models. So uh, all these uh, 20 different models start with the four base models. So uh, uh, sometimes back in 2013, John Mosher did a very nice presentation about the 20 API business models. And uh, in that session, he discussed about uh, all these 20 models. So I'll not go into detail about that. If you're interested, you can uh, do a simple search on the internet about the API business models. Then uh, you will find about that uh, topic but in this session i will uh, discuss about the top level for business model so first one is the free access to api so free access to api means uh, uh, you won't charge for using these apis as example we can think about government api facebook apis or something like that so uh, government apis are they are uh, available with the uh, free data available uh, with the government and they need to encourage developers to build free app for the betterment of the society. So government will have free access for those APIs. So at the same time, uh, if you consider the Facebook, what they need to have is uh, build more audience around this product, uh, acquiring more and more users. So they will they also encourage people to use the APIs freely. So they don't charge anything. As a return, they will get more user base. So then uh, second one is developers pay for the API usage. So this is the uh, most common one and uh, most people monetize this approach. So in this case, uh, uh, developers have to pay for the API usage and API owners get some money. So uh, revenue generated by API usage. As example, we can think about Stripe, PayPal, Google, and there are a lot of other uh, companies too. So in this approach, we have different uh, charging mechanisms. So uh, tier is one approach, freemium, pay as you go, transaction fee based, unit based, etc. Those are examples. So if it is a tiered approach, you can have different tiers. So based on the tier, you will get charged. So premium means you have a set of APIs available freely, but if you need more resource, you will have to pay for that. So pay as you go means uh, you can pay according to the your usage. So transaction fee based means uh, you will do multiple API calls, but whenever you do the transaction, so they will charge percentage of their transaction. So same as the uh, unit based uh, API usage. So then uh, uh, in this session, uh, we will mainly focus on this uh, developer uh, Pays for the API usage approach because that's the most common one into the industry, and most people earn re uh, get revenue uh, through that approach. So next one is the developer get paid for the API usage. So if we discuss about affiliate marketing, e-commerce platform, revenue sharing solutions, all these things follow uh, this approach. So in that case, API developer get paid uh, for the API usage. For example, if you uh, uh, but if you do some transaction uh, with your ID, then uh, at the API side, it will record it and get some commission for your redirection or direction. So that is one approach. So then other approach is the indirect revenue. So uh, most of the time, indirect revenue means uh, you don't directly get the uh, payment for the API calls, but through the API calls, you do some sort of business. 
so from that business you will get indirect revenue uh, for the api course so this is also very common uh, these days so if we consider uh, ebay kind of things so it is we can that we can consider as a indirect revenue so these are the main uh, uh, api business models so uh, today we will discuss more about the second topic so now we'll see what uh, what's the difference between apis and business apis so in the api I, we I discussed before it has uh, different uh, quality of services so in addition to these quality of services uh, business plans engage with the api so that's how uh, uh, business api can be formed from the uh, normal api so now i will uh, quickly explain the flow if someone how someone can try to consume business api in wso2 api right so let's say we have an application developer and this particular application developer need to develop application we can think uh, that as a uh, some kind of application that required uh, weather service or something like that so then what they can do is they can go to api store see what are the available apis so they can see whether api location api and health api are available for them to use so we can assume all these apis are business apis which means they have uh, commercial tiers that are associated with that so whoever going to use that api have to pay for that so now in order to consume these apis uh, consumer need to have application so once they create application they can subscribe to one or more apis and consume them so this application create on behalf of the user so now he can subscribe to weather api with the gold uh, subscription plan so that means he need to access more and more with the api and he subscribe to location api uh, this particular user subscribe to location api with the similar business plan uh, because it is having less amount of access right so uh, likewise when you make these subscriptions uh, there will be subscription tiers created uh, or, uh, created and the subscription plans attached to them so all these things will happen online so once you've done that part you can get the access keys so you will get the access keys on behalf of the application and you can use that uh, access key to uh, invoke uh, your apis so once you invoke your api uh, what happens is so based on the tier that you are entitled you will get uh, you will get amount of access right so uh, so during the demonstration we will see how these things uh, can do uh, with wso2 api manager and stripe so i would like to hand over this session to charming so he can discuss further and explain you how you can do this with the wso2 api manager and stripe or to charming thank you sanjeev so let's have a look at how you can implement this business model using api manager and other relevant configurations so to implement this we need few setups few things to be up and running we need wso2 api manager version 3.0 and we need wso2 api manager analytics 3.0 also for this demo we will need two stripe accounts one for the tenant admin one for the api publisher and we need to have a database for this demo i will be using a mysql database but you are free to use a database of your choice so as you can see here in the url i have pointed to the documentation which i have followed in order to configure this setup that documentation has all the instructions for you so that you can follow that and replicate my setup in your local machine as well so if i explain why we need these things we need api manager server to create publish and do the monetization of these apis the analytics server is needed to capture the usage data with respect to api usage and then finally we will be using that data and pump it to whatever the billing engine in this case stripe to calculate the bill the database is 
used to store the necessary artifacts related to API and application and subscription as well. So, so that is about the setup. Now, here is a summary of what we are going to cover in the demo. So if you are familiar with, we assume that you are familiar with the flow of APM, WSO2 API manager. So this is in a nutshell. So this will cover what, what is the high level picture and the extension points in, in a summary. So the left side will demonstrate what happens in WSO2 API manager and the right side of the table will demonstrate what will happen in the billing engine. The first step would be creating a subscription tier. This should be a commercial tier as Sanjeeva mentioned, because in order to have the concept of monetization, we would have, we will need to have a commercial tier. When you create a commercial tier, and if you have configured this extension point correctly, in the billing engine, a plan will be created. In this case, a billing plan. The second thing would be monetization of API. So when that happens in WSO2 API manager side, whatever what happens in the billing engine is the previously created plans will be attached to an object representation representing the API. Then the next step would be subscribe into a monetized API. So that is the action that we do in WSO2 API manager. When that happens through the extension point, we will be creating necessary subscriptions in the billing engine. That is what happens behind the screen. Then once you start using the API, the usage will be recorded in the analytics server and then we need to submit that API usage to whatever the billing engine. And then we, when we submit that data, we will be able to calculate the current billing or the pending invoice for your uh, subscription. The last part is viewing the invoice. So here what happens is WSO2 API manager will call the necessary APIs in the billing engine and retrieve the pending invoice data. So this is a this is the summary. So as I mentioned, the step one would be creating a subscription policy. So here you can see in the left side of the screen, we have WSO2 API manager and uh, the corresponding UI, which is related to capturing the necessary information about the billing engine, sorry, the tier in the right side, we have a representation in the stripe. So let's have a look at how this thing is working. So first we need to go to the admin dashboard of WSO2 Pay Manager. Then you go to subscription policies. As you can see, I have created some new policies and here I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new subscription policy. Let's say paid policy. I can have a description if needed. Request count, I will put some dummy values here. This is the important part. So here you can see the billing plan should be commercial and the monetization plan should be fixed rate or dynamic rate. So what, what this means is if this plan is having a fixed amount of rate um, price to be paid or pay as you go. So for this demo, we will be using pay as you go. That means dynamic usage. So as you can see, once you uh, fill the, select the dynamic usage, the price per request should be specified. Here, let's say the price per request is two, currency, currency is US dollars, and the billing cycle is week. So this particular data elements will be used to create the plan in the Stripe account, or whatever the billing engine that you configure. So once you click save, 
and when you go to your stripe account corresponding stripe account what will happen is you will see the corresponding plan has been created as you can see the pricing plan is created so that is the first step in this process the second step would be monetizing an api so here what happens is in wc2 api manager publisher we have a separate screen to enable and disable monetization when we enable monetization by specifying the necessary attributes the stripe account in stripe account what happens is that previously created plan will be attached to the api which is representing the api object okay so now let's have a look at how this is going to work for this i have already created an api in wso to api manager i assume you have a basic understanding of that so i'm not going to in detail to how to create an api and those stuff instead what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you the necessary points that you need to change so i'm going to take this api and i will be going to the business plans section and here you can see the business plans which i have created in the admin portal here i have my paid policy and test policy which are created in in addition to the default ts that i have in the fresh setup so i am going to select these two policies and some free tiers as well right so then i am going to save the api now at this point nothing will happen in the billing engine because we have just attached a commercial tier to the api so in order to monetize this api we have a separate user interface like this now as you can see in this screen we will be capturing the attributes that is necessary to create a plan and attach it to the api in the necessary billing engine so here you can see even though i have attached free tiers and commercial tiers only the commercial tiers will be monetized so free tiers are not monetized so as you can see here the monetization properties you can specify according to your billing engine so for this demo we need the stripe account key for that so i i already have set up my account so i am going to get my key dummy of the test account and then i will do the monetization here please keep in mind that you can't specify the commercial policies that can be that have to be monetized either you have to monetize all commercial tiers or demonetize all the commercial tiers so this this paid policy and test policy one will be monetized so once you save this i have to log in and then go to monetization tab and enable monetization and then i'm going to save it then monetization has been enabled successfully then i am going to check the other stripe account which i have so this is this here so this is the second stripe account which has been created for the use of the api provider here you can see the webinar api has two pricing plans which we have attached as the commercial policies so this is what happens when you enable monetization for a particular api in wso2 api manager step number 3 is usually subscribing to a monetized api so in addition to the normal subscription flow what happens here is we will be creating necessary subscription related to the monetized api in stripe 
so i assume you have an understanding about subscribing to an api so i will be going into the developer portal of my wso2 api manager setup and i have application i will create a new application the test app <clears throat> and i i will create generate some keys now here what i'm going to do is i will be selecting the api which is a monetized api and i need to specify the policy in here as you can see i am not choosing the free tiers i am choosing one of the paid tiers and then i am going to subscribe to this api so when subscription is successfully enabled what happens in the stripe account is we will have the corresponding subscription in the billing engine so let's have a look at how it looks like so here you can see when you go to the subscription tab and reload it here you can see it is created for the test application so as you can see here we have the description and the upcoming invoice since we have just subscribed we have a zero usage for this subscription so what would be our next task we will be invoking and consuming this api and see how this behaves and how this usage based will be calc usage based bill will be calculated then the next step would be invoking api and publishing summarized data so for that i will be going to api store and then i will be invoking this api using the subscription that i have created earlier yeah i am going to go to the try it out and execute it few times okay now keep in mind that now the api has been invoked and then usage data will be recorded in the analytics server database we need to push that data to the billing engine for that we have designed a special admin api which you can use in order to publish this summarized data to the corresponding billing engine so if you want to try this scenario i have hosted the exact script that i am using here for the demo in the given url so you can download it and import it to the postman setup and then when you uh, kind of edit the parameter the necessary parameters and then you will be able to get the response that i am getting so let's have a look at how how this works for that i will be going to this admin api and i'm going to get a token and then i'm going to fetch this token and then i will be using that to publish the data as you can see i got a response using uh, stating that the request has been accepted and the server is running the usage publisher so now the data has been published to stripe as you can see now let's have a look at the stripe account and see how the usage has been updated for that we will be going to the corresponding stripe account and we are going to reload the screen here you can see previously it was the quantity was zero but now here we have three quantity as three that means i have invoked my api three times and one request cost will cost two dollars and then my total amount billable amount will be six dollars so that is how the invoice will be calculated so 
now you might have a question like this so why do we offer this kind of an api admin api why don't we have a ui so the frequency of pushing this data might differ from one scenario to another scenario so some person might push this data daily someone might push this data to the billing engine each and every hour so it depends on the use case so what you can do is you can periodically call this api based on your use case and then publish that data into the corresponding billing engine now i showed you the invoice in stripe we have developed a component in the wso2 api manager where you can view the invoice without going to the stripe account so if you go to the publisher and store both in both interfaces we have a component ui component to fetch the data from the corresponding billing engine and showing it to you and ultimately you can download it as a pdf as well let's have a look at how it looks like for that i'm going to go to the api so store first and then applications subscription here as you can see i have a view invoice button here you can see the exact dollar amount which we had earlier in stripe is displayed here so if you click this print button it will download this as a pdf so that is how you generate the invoice in store let's have a look at the publisher as well so when you go to apis the web, webinar api here i have the subscription here also i have the invoice as you can see the same invoice will be fetched from the stripe account here you have the view invoice button and then that can be used to fetch the invoice and view the pending bill so that is all about the demo so now you have an understanding about why do we need api monetization what is the importance of that the four mostly used monetization models with respect to apis and what is the monetization model that we support in wso2 api manager out of the box so now at the in the demo we have presented you how you can use wso2 api manager api manager analytics and corresponding stripe accounts to demonstrate a scenario where you have the usage based billing model now it is time for you to download these two products and try it out for yourself i have included the corresponding links to download the servers and the configuration documentation so that is for the demo now we will move to the q and a section okay so we have a question how stripe configured to integrate with api m so i'll uh, go back to the slide and answer here here as you can see the extension point if you pay attention to the left side of this slide which is which is having the header wso2 api manager here you have the necessary extension points so we have developed code we have modified our code in a way that we, you can plug your own interface of this implementation if you support this interface then you will be able to enjoy the benefits of this monetization model uh, keep in mind that we we have the default billing engine is stripe so that 
Stripe implementation we have already coded and then you can use if you you if you want to use any other billing engine what you need to do is you need to write a code which complies with this extension point and then integrate it to api management uh, the document which i have pointed uh, earlier will have all the steps needed to do so do you need the initial configuration so like that or you can show them uh, okay so i'll show you here when you go to the documentation as well so i'll show you here the documentation is this here you can see all the necessary configurations that you need to do in api manager and analytics and in the stripe accounts as well so here you can see there are there are uh, many configurations but if you do this right you will be able to get the outcome that we got in the demo as well yeah so there was another question uh, that particular question is uh, this particular uh, uh, api is uh, generic or stripe based so it is uh, having a interface and it is uh, not specific to stripe so if you have any other uh, solution or something that built by yourself or if it is uh, any other commercial platform uh, then uh, you can use the same interface and uh, do the specific implementation so in this particular case uh, you can see right uh, there are some uh, extension uh, jar file that you need to put there so similarly uh, you can uh, follow the interface uh, that we have base interface for this one and uh, do your custom implementation for any platform and uh, then use that so this uh, for the initial release uh, we plan to do only for this stripe but based on the demand uh, we are planning to do uh, some other implementations as well for other common uh, billing solutions uh, okay Uh, we have another question uh, do i need to have a stripe paid account the answer is no so in my demo also i used uh, the test data account that you can create in stripe for free so you don't need to kind of have a paid subscription in stripe you can uh, easily put your email and get registered there and uh, play with the test data that they provide you so you don't need any paid account another question that i get from another person is does the api subscriber need to have a stripe account so if you follow the presentation there we had only two stripe accounts one for the tenant admin and the other one is for the api publisher so for api subscriber we don't need any stripe account the only thing that he needs is a credit card so what happens is we will be creating necessary artifacts to represent the customer on behalf of the subscriber so subscriber does not have to worry about creating a stripe account at all okay so we have another question uh, so uh, there was a question about uh, storing payment data or credit card data so uh, we don't uh, store any of the data in wso2 uh, api manager system so if you are trying to implement some solution uh, which is compliance with the pci dss kind of thing so uh, at wso2 api manager side we don't store any specific payment related data so uh, you can directly pass that payment data into the stripe and the stripe side uh, they will record all the payment data and all these things uh, handle at the uh, stripe side you don't need to submit uh, any of the credential or credit card details or anything like that uh, into wso2 api manager and also there's uh, another question uh, they ask uh, what are the matrices sent by the jar file now so uh, i think uh, uh, specifically asking about what kind of data we are pushing from uh, api manager side to stripe side 
Yeah, so I believe the question is about uh, publishing the usage data. So what happens is we in analytics, we have summarized the data with respect to the API usage. We publish that summarized data. In simple terms, the number of API count, the number of times that the API is get invoked. So that data will be pushed. So that is a number. This API has been invoked three times. So that number will be sent to Stripe and the Stripe will be able to do the calculation based on the unit price and then uh, create the invoice based on that data. Uh, another question we got is, uh, what is the billing model used in here? So as Sanjeev explain, explained, uh, we are supporting the pay as you go, which is the most common uh, kind of billing model used in the service based industries. So, as you can see in my demo, also I created a tier which is having a dynamic usage. That means you have to pay for your usage. One request is worth of $3, and if you uh, invoke it two times, then you need to the corresponding amount okay then i think uh, we don't have any more questions so i think uh, we can uh, wrap up so uh, thank you very much everyone uh, for joining uh, today webinar and uh, in the last slide uh, we have uh, links to uh, so you can go to uh, this uh, API manager page and uh, then from that point or not you can uh, go to document and uh, see how these things enable so in the uh, last link uh, it will directly go uh, direct you to the uh, monetization page so once you go that page uh, you will find all the necessary information and the instructions to uh, set up this solution so uh, you can try that out and if you have any questions please let us know uh, thank you very much for joining today with me. Thank you very much. Have a good day.